In this video, we are going to cover the make screen. Now, we're starting to get to a point in the uh, video series where things are really beginning to come together. All of the elements that we've covered, we're going to start referencing back to other videos we have done, other areas where we have co covered, and also even areas which we haven't covered yet. So a couple of small examples. First off, back in series three, when um, I was making the videos for the stock screen, I mentioned or I introduced the concept of make products to stock because we were covering how workflows work inside of a stock screen. When I made this video, we didn't yet cover the make screen, which we're planning to do in this video series. Uh, but what I did do is I did give a little background on what is uh, the different types of manufacturing workflows. And those manufacturing workflows include make to order and make to stock. So we've already done a make to stock workflow in the past. So hopefully you've already seen the video and you know that. But um, today we're also going to be seeing what appears to be the make to order workflow. And so what is a make to order workflow? Make to order workflow is a sales order that gets pushed to manufacturing basically. Because as we had mentioned earlier, the types of manufacturing make to stock, you bring products into inventory, make to order, you only produce the products against the sales order. It doesn't come from inventory because it's not in inventory. So Katana supports both of these workflows. So you'll actually see those types of elements inside of the make queue here on the make screen. So what are we actually looking at here on the make screen? There are a lot of things. Um, first off, uh, we have the schedule, which is a list of all of your manufacturing orders. We have the tasks, which is a tab where you see all of your resources, their linked manufacturing orders, the actual operation that's being performed against them, and the task being updated. Within the schedule, um, we mainly have uh, open manufacturing orders as well as done manufacturing orders. Open manufacturing orders are any manufacturing order that has been created but not completed. And um, on the left hand side, you'll see something called a rank. So Katana has a uh, drag and drop functionality, which is a major uh, part of our feature set called a real time planner. So real time planner allows you to change priority of manufacturing orders based on certain elements that affect your manufacturing. And those elements can include anything such as ingredient availability, or in the case of customers, uh, they need to have something done quicker. Um, also, uh, in certain instances, which are more advanced manufacturing features such as uh, what resources are available to work on certain manufacturing orders uh, based on certain bottlenecks where other types of products might be taking up too much work in the manufacturing queue and can't be done until later because of a bottleneck in your resources or some other factors that would relate to how your manufacturing process is being done within your operation. So it's a lot to take in. So we'll try to we'll try to chunk it out in baby steps as we move forward through the series and uh, and talk about how all of these items are uh, are working overall. We have the uh, check boxes here, which allow you to do um, bulk actions. In bulk actions, there is a lot of bulk actions, um, including the change of production production status for your orders, printing them with different types of print templates, deleting them. In addition to that, you have your order numbers, which when you select open one of these numbers, it will bring you into the individual manufacturing order. So right now we're seeing a high level of every single manufacturing order. We have a section here called customer. And this might be a little confusing at first what it actually means, but one of the things that I need to point out is where the difference is between a make to stock make order and a make to order make order can be identified. A make to order manufacturing order will 
be linked to a sales order document and that will be associated to a customer. So the actual make to order manufacturing orders are, uh, derive from the sell screen when you press the make to order button and it sends it over into the manufacturing queue and links them together. So this is how the, a make to order is functioning between the sales page or between the sales screen and the make screen. And you'll typically see like a name of a person who that customer is. We also have um, the individual manufacturing orders which don't have a customer. So those are typically your make to stock orders. But in the case of a business that's creating sub assemblies, and as we had mentioned also in the stock screen videos, um, in our example today, you might have a furniture factory that is producing the sub assembly items to inventory to hold them in stock and then using them up whenever they do a make to order workflow. So it's like a two step manufacturing process where one item is created and held in stock and then the other one is just whenever it gets through the assembly and painting process and then off it goes to the customer without actually uh, sitting in inventory prior to being shipped. So there is a case where a manufacturing order, which is a sub assembly manufacturing order is got a customer, which is a higher level assembly. So depending on the scenario, um, you can have cases where uh, this customer field column is actually filled out based on the relationships between a make to stock order and another manufacturing order within the queue. So it would be possible that this manufacturing order number three could be um, could have a customer which is manufacturer order number two and vice versa. Now taking that a little bit further, going farther to the right, we have the product column and this is the actual product variant being made. So the concept or the way in which manufacturing orders uh, are created, you have one product per manufacturing order and that product can be made in whatever quantity you specify. So in this case, dining room table, the category is mentioned here. Sometimes categories come in handy, as mentioned previously. You can organize them on the items screen. You can organize them on the stock screen. You can organize them on the manufacturing screen. Sometimes whenever you're doing manufacturing work, a lot of your manufacturing operations are driven by the type of product that you're making. For example, um, I have worked with customers that have this product driven manufacturing process. And one example of this was a company that was making uh, phone cases, but doing a laser inscription process on them. And so they had a category called phone cases. And so they would put that category in there and then try to get, try to bundle all of the phone cases together within the manufacturing queue. So that way they could put them through the laser inscription machines uh, as simultaneously as possible. Now it was a different type of use case that wasn't so task driven, but instead it was more like um, very simple manufacturing process. So they only had one or two operations per manufacturing order, but it was easy to do. But using categories as a way to facilitate that was very easy to help them organize their manufacturing list. The other use case that I've come across where companies are uh, using this is they would put in a category uh, related to what stage of the assembly process that item is in. And they would put like one, two, and three. And the lower the number meant the higher the level of the assembly. And then level two and level three would be the uh, earliest components that build up to level one. And they would be able to organize their queue based on uh, categorical uh, classifications. So there's a couple of ways in which you can use this information to better uh, organize how you are actually doing your manufacturing in your uh, in your manufacturing um, team. Quantity, pretty straightforward what that covers. And then we have something called planned time. And planned time is a topic all of its own. But uh, what does it mean? It means that when we take the uh, product items, and if you recall, when we were covering the item cards for products on the operations tab, we would need to insert uh, the amount of hours 
or minutes it would take to do an operation. So in the case of, let's say, a table, which might go through five operations, uh, it would take 15 hours to do all of those uh, operations to make one table. So that becomes your planned time. And if you need to understand what your planned time is within your organization, that helps you uh, allocate your resources as efficiently as possible to help figure out when you're going to finish the manufacturing for those goods. And what I mean by finish the manufacturing for those goods is the production deadline. There's a relationship between the available resources in terms of hours that you have um, and the deadline in which an order needs to be prepared. And in this relationship, you wanna make sure that you complete your manufacturing on time. So a production deadline is something that actually Katana can auto calculate using our configured deadlines calculator, which we'll talk about in a separate video. And then if you have a, pro, a manufacturing order that is linked to sales through the make to order workflow, then it will actually contain a delivery deadline. So the delivery deadline is actually from the sell screen and it is also related to what you see in the settings page uh, under general default time for sales orders. So when you are in a business that is responsible for doing a make to order workflow, you'll have the sales deadline and also probably a, manu a production deadline. And you wanna make sure that your production deadline never exceeds your sales deadline because if your customer is expecting something like this on a particular day, your production deadline better be earlier. So Katana is using a lot of visual cues to help you identify where deviations like this may occur. And these visual cues are all color coded, color based. And you'll have to like, you'll train your mind to, to look for those cues when you're using the software regularly, but they're there, although they're not quite as obvious as you would expect. I'll give you a simple example. Um, this is a production deadline for sales order four. That is a make to order workflow. And it needs to be done on the 13th of December. That's the production deadline. But the delivery deadline from the sales order is the 12th of December. And so the 12th of December, because it notices this deviation in the relationship, it turns red. It says, hey, I've turned red, we have a problem. So the theme of turning things red is actually quite common in, in, in uh, Katana. For example, on the stock screen, the negative number appears in the missing or excess column. On the production screen, the production deadline, delivery deadline, those turn red if there's a problem. And you will also see these visual cues on the sales order list just as well if a deviation is occurring. So the whole idea is to use these visual cues to make yourself understand, okay, that's something that is important and I need to solve that problem. So what do I do? I move something up and down in my manufacturing list. So if, for example, my delivery deadline is coming earlier, then I need to probably move this order up the queue to get it done sooner. So that way I don't make my customers unhappy. That's not good for the customer experience in terms of fulfilling your sales orders. On the production deadline side, you might see that it's red because my ingredients are presently missing. I need to go and make a decision about that. So it says that my ingredients are not available. So what can I do here to solve that problem? And, uh, and those, are, those are the ways that Katana uses uh, the real-time planner, the way in which the relationship between sales and manufacturing are occurring. All of these little tiny visual elements that don't necessarily scream at you, hey, make a decision about this. But they say, look, you have to make a decision because this, there's something wrong here. So do something with that in order to help solve a problem so that way you can run your platform efficiently. This is the live feedback mechanism that you can't achieve if you're navigating away from older systems or Excel spreadsheet type of uh, businesses or other types of softwares that are completely scattered across your organization and there's no linking of the actual real-time situational awareness. 
And this is where Katana delivers value. Now, coming back and going a little bit more forward here to the right, uh, we have what is called the ingredients availability. And this turns green. If you have some items in stock to make these manufacturing orders, it's red. I'll cover this in a separate video. It's a whole entire um, workflow logic that's related to our real-time planner. And then we have the production statuses, which can be updated from here. And we'll cover those as well, moving into, uh, moving into the actual manufacturing order cards. And here on the done list of manufacturing orders, which I'll go ahead and cover in this video as well, you'll see um, an overview of the orders that have already been completed. Also, if they have an associated customer, product category, and then we have something called planned and actual quantity. So this is kind of an area that's related to how you plan production, but how it actually turns out. Then you have planned actual time, how you plan to spend your time producing something, but how it actually turned out. And then we get into the material and subassembly cost, along with operations cost and the total costs. So when we start to cover more of the costing elements in our video series, then you'll see a lot of these pieces starting to come together uh, across the um, entire uh, platform. And then you'll see the production status over here and the actual completion date, uh, and also export op options for both open and done uh, manufacturing orders.